My name is uh, Amber Judith. I am going to talk about women budding in Uganda, and I'm going to do it with uh, Abia. Abia is the secretary of the Uganda Women Budders, and uh, I am the chairperson of the Uganda Women Budders Club. So later on, we shall introduce ourselves in detail, and we're going to do this. We're going to do this presentation together. I will hand over to Abby and then. Looks like we lost Judith. She did mention that there was some issues with the network. Uh, when we tested it, it was fine, but uh, perhaps it's not fine at the moment. So please, can we just be a little bit patient? Perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about the, the, the network in, in any case, in the meantime. Okay, we are the Uganda Women Brothers Club. We are under the Uganda Safari Guides Association. It's a club that started in May 2013. And we have around eight years in existence. Okay, I think Judith is back. Yes. Yeah. Back to you, so, Judith. Sorry. I am so sorry about my connection, but uh, Abia can go on with her introduction, then I can take one from then. Okay, so this is Abia. I'm a nature guide. I specialize in birds. I love those winged creatures. I do consultancy for tourism, as well as participate in research, especially for wildlife. And I'm a secretary and a pioneer member of the Uganda Women Brothers Club. I hold a bachelor's in environmental science from Chambogo University. And I have a young company, which I co-found called Igret Gorilla Safaris. Thank you, Abia. And uh, my name is Judith Nirembe. I am the chairperson of the Uganda Women Brothers an initiative that we started to increase the number of women in bird watching as well as nature guiding. I am a bird guide, a photographer. I am a research, um, majorly looking at uh, the shrew bill. I am currently I am the editor for the Bird Watch Uganda newsletter, something that we have started to, um, to showcase the bird life of Uganda. And uh, my background, I hold a master's in environment and natural resource management, and uh, I am a passionate conservationist. So um, just to tell you a little bit about Uganda, uh, Uganda is a small country, it's found in East Africa. Uh, it's about uh, 90,000 square, square miles. Um, we have over 50 tribes and all these tribes are very unique with the, the cuisines, the special food, um, the kind of attire they wear, the traditional attire. They're very unique with the marriages. And then Uganda has one of the happiest and uh, warm people in Africa. And uh, you could say the whole world. So our population is about uh, 46 million um, people with a, a birth rate of about uh, at least six kids uh, per woman. And um, this makes the proportion of women much bigger than men, uh, making it 51% uh, compared to the men who are 49%. And this largely, um, this largely informs most of uh, uh, the livelihoods and uh, the imbalance between um, the livelihoods and the professions. Uh, Abia can take on from uh, the next slide. Yes, please. Next slide, Judith. Um, I think the next slide is up, uh, the one with the gorilla on it. Yes, please. Okay. So Uganda is blessed to have a lot of unique things to show the world. 
we have over 1,080 species. We're actually going towards 1,100 bird species, including the Albertine rift endemics, including the Paleartic and intra-African migrants, including the all the birds, especially like the shoebill, which is Africa's number one sought after bird. We have the highest chances of seeing the shoebill in Uganda. We have over 350 mammal species, including the endangered mountain gorillas and the highest population of, the, of man's closest cousins, which are the common chimpanzees for now. We also have over a thousand butterfly species, including unique ones, which are also endemic to Uganda, not endemic to Uganda, but to the region. Over 10, we have 10 national parks, 12 wildlife reserves, offering different things from the mountain gorillas, big land mammals like the elephant. We have the tree climbing lions in Ishasha. We have the golden monkeys, and we have a special habitat in Kidepo, which is Africa's most wilderness park, and many others, 34 important bird areas including our Mabamba, Rutembe, and very many other places, and more than 600 forest reserves. Judy? Um, thank you, Abia. So not only is our wildlife, not only is our wildlife in uh, protected areas, but even outside protected areas like farmlands, you can find a number of bird species. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background, uh, especially the cultural context of women in Africa. So women largely in Africa are considered um, as a source of wealth. This can be in form of uh, heads of cattle, uh, sheep, depending on the part of the country or the part of Africa that you come from. All these items define what is called bright wealth. So when they're giving away a woman into marriage, a number of gifts are exchanged and these are given to her family as uh, appreciation. Uh, but uh, over time, some families, some cultures look at it as a major source of wealth. So a woman right from birth, um, the family looks at a woman as a source of wealth someone that at any one time, once you grow into adulthood, uh, they will exchange you for all these items. And then again, um, you've heard of statements like women belong to the kitchen. So women um, do most of the farming, farming on land, uh, taking care of the family. And as such, they, are, they tend to be overloaded with such tasks and they have no time to take care of uh, time to explore their opportunities and potential. So additionally, women are looked as caretakers. Uh, we look after children, uh, like you see the olive baboon in the picture. Um, we take care of uh, uh, the husbands. Um, we make sure the children have gone to school. We tend to farms. And then largely women are considered as the weak agenda where there's segregation in a number of professions, in a number of roles, and they look at women as unable to do some of this work. Um, for example, I can give an example of driving. Um, when you look around uh, in most countries in Africa, you'll find that there are more men that are driving compared to women because all these stereotypes tend to scare women from taking on some of these opportunities. Then again, women are looked at as um, people that are incapable of leadership or taking on leadership positions. And of course, when you don't have someone that represents you, some of your needs uh, are not well uh, articulated out there, um, maybe to the funders or to the world. So no one gets to know about your potential. Um, the next slide I'll hand over to Abia. Not all is lost. We are still having some positives in the many negatives. 
And some of these are the policies. For example, we have uh, a policy that gives the girl child 1.5 points extra as they go to university. That is in a way boosting education or promoting the girls to join university and giving them more chances. We, our government has also created leadership positions. For example, every district in the country must have a woman leader and the other member of parliament who are males, but also females are free to contest with the males. But in addition to that, actually females can also take on the female position. So you notice that we have more females in parliament right now beyond 30% as we speak, and we are still progressing. We've seen women in Uganda being put at the top positions in organizations like Uganda National Roads Authority, like the Kampala Capital City Authority, and very many other authorities in the country have been made to be led by females by the appointing body, which is a plus for the country. And we've also seen many other females being empowered, be, being trained in leadership in order to take on leadership and, and big tasks in organizations. All right. <clears throat> so this takes me to the birth of the Uganda Women Brothers Club. The Uganda Women Brothers Club was started in uh, May 2013. And uh, this was started after realizing the gap between the men and the women within bird watching in Uganda. And uh, the club started with a few women um, that were established within the tourism industry. Uh, these were general guides and uh, tour operators. So we started when we were about 10. I'm and, sorry, uh, Judith, to interrupt you, numbers, um, but it seems like your slide hasn't has changed. Broke. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, is that all right? I presume it's still coming through the wire. Um, it hasn't changed here. We're still, in pol we're still seeing policies. Is it changed now? Not yet. Has it changed no. on your side? If it's changed on your side, then it's probably just waiting. Back up one. Okay. So we started with a few women. Uh, these were about 10 in number. I beg your pardon. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure which slide you're you meant to be on. The one that's a green box that says started in 2013. Is that the correct one? Yes, yes, that is the correct one. Okay, all right. So we started in uh, May 2013, and we started with a few women that were already established within the tourism industry. And um, these were either nature guides, uh, tourist drivers, as well as uh, two operators that were female already within the industry. And uh, we wanted and still want the club to be a place where women can mentor others into nature guiding based on the experience that they have gone through. We want to empower women with nature guiding skills. This is through trainings, through weekly and monthly excursions, um, to different areas like important bad areas, uh, to forest reserves, where we can share knowledge from the more experienced women. And uh, of course, when you're a group, you're able to attract support from uh, many other people all over the world. And then the Uganda Women Birders Club also mentors young children into conservation. Um, children are always close to women. So having women mentoring children is a, a big tool uh, in conservation because um, women raise the children and they're very close to the kids while the kids are growing up. 
So the, we, we are able to teach children about birds, about their habitats. And this, we also do it during our excursions when we go out as a group. So we have a WhatsApp group um, and a Facebook group where we communicate our activities. And then people that are members can uh, find out and then of the venue, and normally there's a small contribution towards transport and entrance to some of the results. So the other bit is that the club has been a platform for opportunities. Um, the club is able to make recommendations for members to get jobs in tour companies, to get jobs in conservation organizations. And of course the club has been an instrument in bridging the gap between um, the women and the male guides in the bird watching sector. And uh, of course, um, when we talk about women birders, we don't do bird watching in isolation. There's a lot that we have to learn from our male partners. So most of the groups, um, we always go out with the other members of the Uganda Bird Guides Club and uh, the Uganda Safari Guides Association. So just to tell you a little bit about bird watching in Uganda, bird watching is uh, not yet uh, common and it is not yet a common um, niche among the people. Not very many people in Uganda can do bird watching apart from the bird guides. And of course it is the bird guides that introduced their families, their children into bird watching. So that's how we have been able to grow our communities and uh, a number of expatriates that come into the country uh, most already have um, some knowledge about bird watching. So that is uh, the bird watching community in Uganda. We have about 1,090 species of birds and these are spread across different habitats. Um, in, uh, in a distance of about two kilometers, you can find over 60 species of birds. Um, and then we have 24 Albertine Rift endemics. Uh, Uganda lies, a part of Uganda lies within the Albertine Rift. Uh, and we have only one endemic bird species, which is the Fox's weaver. And this is found in the Eastern part of, of Uganda. Um, I can hand over to Abia to take on the next slide. Thank you, Judith. Over to you, Abia. Thank you, Judith. So here are some of the benefits that we get from the budding networks that we have. And one of them is what I just mentioned, which are the networks of like-minded people you get connections, you get connected with the right people, people who like nature the same way you do, people who help you with work because also our bosses are from the same networks. For example, Bad Uganda Safaris has been employing us. So we thank it so much among very many other networks that we have, we are proud to have them. We've shared skills and knowledge, not only in bird watching, but in conservation, in management, in leadership, and in other life aspects, because sometimes we face challenges which could take us off the road of bird watching, but with uh, the right people, people who have seen it all in this sector, then we are able to get the knowledge and the skills on how to handle and continue with our bird watching path. And we've gained a lot of skills in guiding even other related sectors like making crafts, like driving and very many others. We've been successful to inspire other organizations or other groups to come up, for example, the Randa Women Badders, which was formed in 2018. We initiated the one for Kenya Women Badders in 2019. We traveled from Uganda and were happy to join our friends in Kenya to start it up and it's moving on well. We are part of the World Girl Badders and we are happy to have you if any member is here. 
as well as the East African women birders. And we are not in isolation still. We move with all these other birding societies, organizations, name it all. And we are so proud and honored and glad to be hosting the International Conference for Women Birders in December 2023. We say we are ready. And yes, you have all the female guides that you need to take you around the pearl of Africa. Thank you. Um, just to give you a, a sneak peek into the benefits of bird watching to most of us, it is a source of livelihood. Um, it is a, a relaxing activity. Uh, we go out as a group, we meet other birders. Um, for bird watching, we get to relax, we share ideas and knowledge. And uh, of course, bird watching to us is um, leads to conservation of bird species. Some of the women birders uh, have taken on research, have taken on the research career path. This is through participating in citizen science projects. Uh, some are research assistants. And of course, once all this data is collected, it contributes to conservation of bird species. Uh, for example, the shoe bill. And then you have some of the uh, incomes that we get from bird watching, the entrance fees that we pay, the entrance fees that our clients pay, all these feedback into conservation of bird species. Um, the challenges are many. Um, when you take one side, something is telling you no way through and you always have to find your way through. There's always a way through. Um, so the first one is uh, the number of perceptions and judgments from society. Um, our African society expects you at any one point to get married. And um, depending on the person that you marry, you may not have support to continue this career path because it is something that uh, in some cultures, they look at a woman putting on trousers as, a, as an ill, uh, as, a, as, an, as an ill omen. So they expect you to put on dresses, long dresses. Uh, that is what they consider as decency. Um, and then again, society, a lot of times when people will see you dressed in all this attire, people will label you as a, um, they will give you names like you're a tomboy. They'll make judgments, maybe make you feel less of a woman because of uh, the way you're dressed. And um, also, bad watchers are largely considered uh, crazy people. So someone will say crazy birders. Um, and then there's uh, the challenge of uh, family, balancing family and work. It's a very big challenge. If um, you don't get a supportive partner, it may be the end of your career. So some of the women badders that we get that are dedicated over time when they get married, we stop seeing them showing up for activities. They turn to other professions, they turn to other jobs and we cannot, the group uh, starts, um, how should I, uh, the group starts to disintegrate. So over time, we have more people that are joining, but again, we have more of those that we lose along the way. And largely, it is because some women get married and their partners are not supportive of the career. Uh, of course, some partners will complain that the careers are not earning good. So they advise them to take on something else. Um, Abia, Abia, over to you. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so we are still on the slide of challenges and you can start from equipment. Oh, okay, thank you. We lack enough equipment. You know, bird watching equipment is expensive. For example, we don't have any shop that sells binoculars in Uganda and we have to import them. And we don't have all that money 
as young birders, especially the youth who have just come from institutions and they don't have employment yet, but they are interested and they want to venture in bird watching. The young ladies in, their, in return are forced sometimes to be exploited or whoever wants to bring a binocular for them demands for other things that shouldn't be necessary. So that's quite a big challenge and we encourage anyone who wants to share their old or new binocular with any woman birder, they are most welcome. We don't only talk about binoculars, the pointers, laser pointers, we mean cameras, guidebooks, anything that can equip anyone to be a good birder. Yes, and one other big challenge are the high expectations from the members. Most people come when they think they have finished studies, their first degree or their first diploma. They are joining bird watching and they think that's a way to go and they will get quick money. You reach in, you need to practice. Bird watching is expensive, so it will take time for you to learn the birds as you invest in, but you're not earning. So in the long run, sometimes we lose some of the girls to that because their families expect them to start earning and take care of themselves and maybe their siblings or families immediately. And yet the work from bird watching is not that quick. You have to invest in some time, good time and some finances to get to that level. We also have social cultural issues just like Judith mentioned earlier about women being expected to be in families, taking care of husbands and, and children. And sometimes we are perceived as hooligans or people who don't have what to do because of the social cultural issues. Or sometimes they don't want mothers to go in these excursions. You better stay home and take care of the kids or take care of your husband and you're seen as, as a mobile person, which is not good. Yes, yeah, someone is asking about the bird. Okay, it's a carmine bee eater. They know we're through bird, yes. It's a northern carmine bee eater. Okay, so some of the policies in the sector are unfavorable. And I think that's a little bit clear. Inadequate. So I'm using a phone, so sometimes I, I am not seeing properly. Yes, inadequate skilling. And we lack confidence in certain skills like driving. Most of us are not driving. And even when you're interested in learning how to drive, you don't have many people who are willing to sacrifice their cars because the industry deals more with manual cars due to the terrain of the country and the challenges that one could meet along the road. And these are not so simple for the ladies and people with cars are not so patient, yet the girls do not have a lot of money to invest in. So after the first money in a driving school, one needs to practice more, but Sometimes it's hard. We also have inadequate skills in other things like use of technology, for example. We are also not good at marketing. We have very many committed, very many committed girls who are into bird watching, but sometimes they are not good with technology to share what they do. And we are perceived not to be there, but we are there in big numbers. And some people face gender-based violence of any sort from beating to, to being bad from movement and very many other things. Thank you. Judith? Thank you, Abia. So not all hope is lost. Not all hope is lost. And uh, we are very optimistic about our future. And at this, we are looking at creating a strong network of female guides in East Africa. 
um, so that if I bring clients from Uganda, I can ably hand them over to an equally skilled uh, woman guide in Kenya or Tanzania or in South Sudan. Um, we're also looking at extending our activities to cover rural areas. Most of our activities, um, we communicate over WhatsApp, over Facebook, um, platforms which may not easily be accessible to people in rural areas, uh, um, like those that stay around uh, national parks. Um, and then we're also looking at reaching out to school kids uh, mentoring school school children through the school, as well as higher institutions of learning where we can visit universities and do a mass recruit of uh, ladies to increase the numbers. And of course, um, conservation is best started at the grassroots. So that is why we are largely considering uh, reaching out to the school children. And uh, this is uh, one of uh, this is an image from uh, one of our excursions. So we went out bird watching. This is this was uh, Kasenge Forest Reserve. It's found in uh, Mokono District. This is uh, in as you go to eastern to the eastern part of Uganda. And once the kids are done bird watching, they are tasked to draw the species that they have seen. So on the right, you can see a picture of a hornbill. These are pictures done by children, something that shows you that uh, the children learn quick. Uh, they're open-minded and they're willing to learn. Um, this is to show you some of the beauties, the bird species, um, the wildlife, and all that we have in Uganda. So the first bird uh, to the left is the white-tailed blue flycatcher. This is a, a bird that is found in high altitude areas. In Uganda, you can find it in the southwestern part of Uganda, um, in the Mogahinga Gorilla National Park. You can find it in Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. Um, you can find it in uh, Semeriki. And then you have the shoebill. The shoebill is a globally threatened bird species found in a few countries in Africa. And Uganda offers some of the best chances of uh, seeing the shoebill. It's found in uh, 12 of the 34 IBS. And then just below the shoebill, you have one of the important and um, the premier bird watching areas in Uganda. This is the Royal Mile. The Budongo, Royal Mile, the Budongo Forest Royal Mile. This is a route that was well, used by uh, the king of Bunyoro, the Omukama to escape from colonialists. There are very many other stories that can be told about this area. So this area is large and accommodates group bird watching. So if you'd like to do a group tour, you're a large group, um, this is very accommodative. And uh, you'll find species like the chocolate-backed kingfisher. You'll find a lot of species that uh, come from the Congo that we share between Congo and uh, Uganda. You'll find uh, birds like the Ituri batis, and all these are uh, captivating. And um, I'll hand over this to Abia. Okay. Over Thank to you, Abia. Thank you. So on the left side is the rose ring parakeet. And you can find this in Kidepo Valley National Park. That's northeastern part of Uganda. In Kalamoja region, it's not the only one there. This is in, in the Sudan. The, we have very many other nice species there, including the common ostrich, the yellow-necked flancolin, and very many other nice ones. And on the right, it's the quite broad robin chart. You can call it the hidden chart if you want. And you can find it in most parts of the country, including in gardens and around homes. Judith. 
So the next, uh, the next slide, we have the African pine wagtail and we have the African wood owl. So these two bird species tell different stories. Um, most of us in uh, Africa have developed the passion, of, the passion for birds um, coming from the stories that we had from our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, grand, uh, grandfathers, our parents, our siblings, and all these like feed into the pattern that we have. So the African pied wagtail is a bird that uh, brings good fortune. So if hearing an African pied wagtail singing early in the morning around the backyard in your compound, it means it announces the arrival of visitors later in the day. And on the other hand, you have the African wood owl. So the African wood owl is considered as an ill omen in most of our cultures. And a lot of stories will tell you that when you hear the wood owl call, it is announcing the passing of a relative, a friend. Um, and coincidentally, sometimes some of these turn out to be true. So the owls in Africa are one of those um, birds that are, are greatly feared by the people, especially those who have not had a chance to appreciate bird watching. And they take them to be an ill omen. So once someone hears an owl, they will always chase it away. And maybe that largely explains how they have evolved uh, to secretly hide away from people. Um, so the next slide uh, is the African finfoot. And the African finfoot is um, one of those rare bird species. It's very shy. You can find it in uh, streams uh, and hanging vegetation along streams. So in Uganda, it can be seen um, around Lake Mburu National Park. You can see it in a few streams in uh, Chivale National Park. Uh, you can see it, uh, it has been seen on the Seziwa Falls. There's a small river. And of course, the many, uh, with the number of bad guides growing all over the country, we now get more accurate. And, um, and uh, we get more accurate reports of these bad sightings. Over to you, Abia. Thank you, Judith. Ooh, very exciting photo here. On the left is the green-breasted peter. This is one of the special birds in Uganda. It's on the list of the top 10 bird species that one can see in Uganda. And you can find it here in Chivare National Park, currently where I am. It's a unique bird. You can also find it in Budo Forest, but we, we have more chances of seeing it here. And that's normally around uh, July to, to August, October, around there. And the green breasted peter is unique in a way that it normally displays early morning. And that's the only time you stand high chances of seeing it early morning, I mean around 6, 7, and latest 8 a.m. So you have to wake up early morning at around 5 a.m., walk to the forest and wait for it to display. The moment when you find that it has finished displaying, then you may call it a day, or you may consider your luck to save you. But it's an interesting bird if you see it displaying. Yes. And to the right is a Malachite kingfisher. This is one of the successful kingfishers that is water dependent. And it's a very good fisher. It's, it's, it has more than 60% chances of getting a catch every time it fishes. And you can find it on most of our water bodies. Judith. All right, so just to add on a little bit, uh, there are two species of peters in Africa and both of these can be found in Uganda, the green-breasted peter 
and the African Peter. Um, so there is a lot to see in Uganda that is not bad, and uh, the number of um, animals that can be seen, reptiles. So we have the we have the largest population of the mountain gorillas, and this can be seen in a number of parks. You can see them in Bwindi, impenetrable forest national park. You can see them in Mugahinga Gorilla National Park. Um, you can see them in um, in our neighbors in the Congo and uh, the Rwanda. So we have the common chimpanzee, and uh, this is our closest relative. So the common chimpanzee can um, be tracked in a number of areas in uh, Uganda. You can find them in Chivale National Park. You can find them in, um, in Queen Elizabeth in the Chambora Gorge. Uh, you can find them in uh, Semeliki and a number of other areas and Budongo, but uh, some of these areas are not open for tracking. So the gorilla tracking is done in some parts of Budongo while the others are secluded, are secluded for research. Uh, so in Budongo, you can track them in the Kanyopa BD sector. Um, you can also find them in Kalinju Forest Reserve and uh, a chimpanzee permit currently is uh, about $200 per person. Over to you, Abia. Thank you, Judith. So on the left is this angry man. Either he was annoyed or he was thinking about Uganda's godly given features. And it's a patas monkey. It's the only savannah monkey that we have in the country. Besides the vavet monkeys, or you can say tantalus, depending on the habitat where you are. We have a patas monkey, and you can see it in uh, Maction Falls National Park as well as Kidepo Valley National Park, among other regions north and northeast of this country. In the top right corner is the African savanna elephant, Luxodonto Africana, the biggest land mammal, and we have quite a number of them in most of our national parks, including the forest ones as well as ones and you can find the biggest in Ishasha that's the southern part of Queen Elizabeth National Park which cross to Congo and back to Uganda down is the river horse in the middle to right middle that's a hippopotamus and we have thousands and thousands of those especially if you take a, a boat cruise in Queen Elizabeth at Kazinga Channel or a Boat cruise in Maction Falls or in Lake Imburo National Park. And down is the Nubian giraffe, which is found in uh, Maction Falls National Park as well as Lake Imburo National Park. And we have the biggest population. It's, it's generally wide, worldwide endangered, but we have the highest population of them globally in Maction Falls National Park, as well as Kidepo Valley National Park in Uganda. Back to you, Judith. Yes, Abia, you can continue. Oh, OK. And um, top left. OK, so Judith. Yeah, you Hello. can continue. Okay, thank you. thank you. Top left is the three-horned chameleon. It's an arobatine rift endemic, and you can find it at high altitudes of the Rift Valley in places like Renzori. You, it is also called the Renzori three-horned chameleon. So you find it in Renzori, in Uruhija, and in Mugahinga all those areas above 2,000 meters above sea level. Down left is the Semiliki 
female hot spring. Semirik is a unique part, which is a West African land, but in East Africa. And it's why you can find some of the unique things in Uganda, which are West African only in East Africa. And this female hot spring is a cultural feature, but also a natural feature, as we know the formation of a hot spring, but also the local people used to go there to perform their rituals, and there are two hot springs there. The female one is for females to perform their rituals, and the male one, which is not here, was also used for the males. And I would urge anyone to come and experience this rich history. Top right corner are the tree climbing lions of Ishasha. They are famous for their ability to climb trees due to several reasons. One is the weather, the presence of insects, but the ease of sighting prey as well plays a role among many other reasons. Middle are some butterflies among the more than 1,200 butterflies in Uganda. I see several swallowtails, the green banded swallowtail, and very many others. On the bottom right is a craft village. We have several of these in case you're looking for a souvenir. We are happy people, so we tend to have a lot of color. That's why you see a lot of color in our attires. And this is the right place to be, to enjoy culture. From the 56 tribes that we have in Uganda, each culture has a unique way of dressing and they have their unique instruments they use. You can find all these in the craft villages, some in the national parks, some in other areas, including around Entebbe International Airport. Thank you. Judith. Um, so I would like, thank you, Abia. I would like to extend our appreciation to our partners and uh, supporters, any individuals that have extended any kind of support. Um, Top on the list is Bad Uganda Safaris. Uh, we are women birders. Largely, Bad Uganda Safaris has played a big role in training us, in uh, equipping us with skills, uh, giving us um, internship. So Bad Uganda Safaris is uh, a company that we started with at the start right in 2013. Um, they, market us amongst their clients and uh, they're able to get donations in form of binoculars, books, and um, all these for the members of the Uganda Women Butters Club. Uh, so Bad Uganda Safaris is uh, headed by Habat. And um, yes, we are happy and grateful for all the support that it provides us. Next is Harrier Tours. Harrier Tours is a company that is owned by one of the women guides in Uganda, a historical. This is Harriet Kemigisa. Harriet Kemigisa has been instrumental in training many of us. She has uh, motivated many of us and uh, she's, um, she's someone we all look up to. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Abia can, um, she can attest to this. So Harriet is my role model of the women guides that I know. And she has really been supportive of the women guides. And then we have Naturalist Journeys. Naturalist Journeys is an international company. They bring bird watching clients in Uganda. And uh, each time they have a trip, they carry at least one woman birder who gets trained, who gets a hands-on training on how to lead a birding safari, on how to organize uh, the clients, communicate, and uh, guiding group tours. Uh, next, we have the Birding Corp. So the Birding Corp is uh, an organization in the US. Uh, it's a group that brings together birders all over the world. And these really support for women birders. They have uh, done uh, equipment drives. 
And recently they brought us um, a number of equipment and among these was uh, 10 pair of binoculars from the Kowa Sports Optics. And these binoculars were given to the dedicated uh, women birders that had showed uh, commitment and dedication to bird watching. And then there's budding eco tours, budding eco tours. Um, uh, this is uh, through Chris. They offered, they have sponsored at least three women in a training uh, for which some of these trainings are expensive. And uh, most of the women who are either, who have just finished university or are single mothers cannot afford. So budding eco tours has sponsored training of three ladies who are now working as a guide. Uh, then you ha we have the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Uganda Wildlife Authority is uh, mandated to protect all wildlife within Uganda. And this in uh, 2015 offered 15 pair of binoculars and guidebooks, uh, Birds of East Africa guidebooks. These have been instrumental in um, building the club. Uh, a number of women borrow these binoculars and then they return after the excursions. While um, the other women that are dedicated uh, receive this pair of binoculars, they use them. And then when they're able to buy their own pairs, they return these to the club. And these have been uh, quite useful to the club. And then the Uganda Tourism Board, the Uganda Tourism Board is in charge of marketing uh, of all tourism products in Uganda. These have also extended and sponsored a number of trainings for the women guides. They have as well donated guidebooks to the club. And uh, next we have the Uganda Safari Guides Association. So the Uganda Safari Guides Association unites all guides irrespective of their niches irrespective of their niches within Uganda and uh, this has also been instrumental in training and grooming, grooming the women guides as uh, leaders as well as guides and um, we would like to also extend our appreciation and gratitude to many other individuals and organizations that uh, we have not been able to mention here and um, tell them that we are very grateful for all that they've given us. So the message that uh, I leave out to you is to tell the world that women can and we can do it better. Um, so top left is uh, Veronica Nakafero. She's a, a bad guide. She's a naturalist guide and uh, she drives. Um, Maybe a few of you may know her. And uh, next to the green car is uh, Joy, Agnes Joy Kamgisha. Uh, she's the wife to one of uh, the famous brothers, Johnny Kamgisha. I know most of you have interacted with him or have heard about him. Uh, she's um, very knowledgeable about bird watching. She's a photographer and she's a driver guide. And, and then bottom left, we have the uh, Frosty Nanyombi. Frosty Nanyombi is a good guide. Uh, she started off her career at Mpanga Forest Reserve and she has been instrumental in training many women in um, forest bird species, forest birding. She trains, she's uh, very good with bird calls because she started her career uh, within a forest habitat and she has mastered the game. So Prosy has been instrumental in training many of the women. As I mentioned, uh, the senior members of the club are able to pass on skills to the new members that join. So we learn from a pool of ourselves and many other bad guides who are within the club. Um, unlike many other countries that have established onisological courses at university, onisological we don't have such in Uganda. So most of the skills that we have are passed on from our mentors. They're passed on from our, our parents, our, employee, our employers and friends. So we, we learn a bit, we learn a lot from interacting with each other. Um, since most of the courses at universities are generalized courses. 
And uh, next to Prosi, we have uh, Akelo Olive. Akelo Olive is um, as small as she is, uh, she's an animal handler. She's working with the CTC Conservation Center. She grooms lions, hyenas. Um, her nickname is a uh, snake girl, and she does reptile handling tours. So she's also very instrumental to the club because she has taught most of us about reptiles, told, taught us to stop fearing uh, snakes. Um, and she's also a bird watcher. Um, next to Olive is uh, Patricia Kamsime. Uh, Patricia Kamsime has also done a lot of training uh, in uh, Buindi. She has gone to Chivale and uh, she's a very good bird guide. So my message to you is uh, to let the world know that we can do it and we can also do it better. Um, this is just to say thank you very much for listening to the presentation. Thank you, Derek, for putting all this together and uh, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, apologies for the unstable internet. I am in Kenya, um, here to attend uh, Fundamentals of Onisology course and uh, I've been struggling with the internet. I'm still settling in. While Abia is in Chivale Forest National Park, she's also leading uh, the tour. So we are, we are quite apart, distances apart, and uh, you'll forgive us for the slow response, especially uh, with the presentation. And I hope you all had um, uh, fun on our trip to Uganda, and uh, I'll be happy to take on any questions that have been raised through the chat. Uh, after I stop share, maybe I can read through the chat. Otherwise, thank you so much. In uh, Luganda, we say Mwevale. In Nyankole, we say uh, Mwevale with an R. Uh, all these depend on uh, which part of the country you come. So it's just the intonation of the words, whereas some um, cultures uh, will say differently. The northern part of Uganda, they say Afoyo. Um, this is our contact information. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Judith, and thank you, Abia. This is a really amazing things that you've accomplished. And uh, I think you are justified in being proud of your achievements. Abia, I see you are still muted. I don't know if you have anything to, um, to add as we, as we finish up. And as Judith said, there are, are some questions in the chat. Um, since you're watching the chat, Judith, I won't read out the questions. You can just pick up the ones that uh, uh, you want to answer and if anybody else has any questions just please type them in the chat lots of people saying thank you and great presentation okay. and I'm, uh, I'm in complete agreement with so, them um... sorry go ahead thank you derek uh, yeah i'm looking through for the questions so um, Hillary asks, please tell us more about the International Women Birders Conference. So International Women Birders Conference is a, a conference that we started. Uh, this was uh, started by a uh, grand gentleman, Herbert Biarhanga. And this is to bring women together all over the world to share skills, knowledge, and to grow and empower women. So the conference has a website and the website is already up. It, it will happen in December 6th to 8th December in 2023. There will be a number of pre and post conference bird watching tours, and this will specifically be led by women in, um, in, uh, in an aim to promote and empower women in uh, guiding. Uh, so if you would like to book, uh, a lot of the tours will be subsidized. If you would like to book a tour then, please visit the website. There's a website. And um, the next question, uh, the various sponsors or guides affiliated with any of the touring operations that people in the US, for example, will book. Yes, um, a number of, uh, we have a number of partners. Uh, for example, Naturalist Janice is best in the US. They train a number of, uh, a number of, 
women guides on each of their tours. Alternatively, you can book tours uh, straight uh, through the Women Birding website. There's uh, an email, it's info at ugandawomenbirders.org, or you can visit our website, or if you have our contacts, either Abia or myself, you can uh, reach us through if you want to book a tour. And uh, each of us has is capable of uh, organizing, costing a tour, and yeah, we can get you here to Uganda and advise on which places you can go to. There you go. I see Alma, um, um, Uganda is calling you. So there's your answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so accomplished okay i think all these are thank you thank you so much for listening and uh, i would also like um to extend my appreciation to the to the people that shared their photos with me uh, most of the photos except where i have put a name of uh except where i put photo credits most of the photos were taken by myself and my husband alex kanzira he's also a bird watch and has been quite instrumental in supporting me as we support each other through this career uh thank you alex and yeah thank you so much for listening and uh, i will just uh hand over to abby in case she has something to say uh Thank you, Judith. I, I don't think I have much to say except thanking people. Thank you for listening to us, for giving us time with all the technical challenges. You've been there to listen to us and we urge you to come to Uganda. We are as safe as you are home country. And the women can lead the tours the right way. We can give you the experiences that you want. And we can also share something with you, something to do with culture, knowledge. We really look forward to it. And we are excited to host the International Women Brothers Conference. Thank you. Thanks very much, Judith and Abia. And I can vouch for what you said about Uganda being both wonderful and warm and uh, and safe. I've been there many times, not for birding though. Um, and I uh, really enjoyed it. So thanks very much. And uh, thanks for sharing with, with us. And as I said, you know, you can justify, we'd be proud of your achievements. And I think we look forward to seeing more of them. Thanks everybody. And thanks for, for being part of this webinar. Uh, we have one more coming up in March, celebrating women in birding and ornithology. So join us next week, Thursday, um, where we'll be hearing about the um, uh, Cape Rock Jumper from another uh, woman ornithologist. So thanks everybody and thanks for joining and we'll see you next time. <laughs>